Greetings, royal family, and welcome to another message by the Honorable Yudhe Wavhe Beit Noon Sophie. Yudhe Wavhe. Now, royal family, this message was taught many years ago by the Honorable Yudhe Wavhe and is being presented to you today by Yahweh's royal priesthood. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Visit us at Yahweh's royal priesthood. www.yahweh144 zero 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 dot com and also royal family join us at the university of yahweh where classes are designed for the godhead visit us at www.universityofyahweh.org also, Royal Family, listen to our weekly podcasts by the University of Yahweh, found on most podcast platforms. We look forward to you being there as well. Enjoy, Royal Family. Shalom Aleichem. Welcome to the 12th Annual International Feast of Tabernacles held at the fabulous Barclay Hotel, Atlanta's most convenient address. I love the subject, the theme of this feast, Keep the Laws of Yudhe Wafe and Be Blessed. Nothing is a greater secret than to pay Yahweh and yourself first, and to never touch what you pay yourself. I know that there are some who have not studied as they should, and they are somewhat mystified about the power of never touching what you pay yourself. When you're short-sighted, then it does raise a serious question. My goodness, I'm going to be putting up 10% of all that I earn and never touch it? Well, what's the value? What is the purpose? I'm to never, ever touch it? Ooh, that seems so futile. I've, I've always... Uh, put something up for the purpose of touching it. And that is also the reason that you have always been in poverty as a people because you have never retained your wealth. And uh, you don't understand the power of ownership of wealth and to move from generation to generation with ever-increasing wealth. I oftentimes raise the question in regard to this, um, what if your grandfather and mother had paid Yahweh and themselves first all of their lives, all of their working lives? They grew up like that. And they saved that 10% and never touched it. That meant that when they died, they would have left a fortune to your personal mother and father. And then think, your mother and father would leave a double fortune for you, and you'd leave it for yourself, your children, and you will have power beyond calculation. Being wealthy addresses its own blessings in keeping the laws of Yahweh. This is a law. You become the owners of the planet. You become the employers 
of the entire planet Earth. The ruler, the undisputed ruler. And then you're going to be keeping these laws in righteousness, true holiness and righteousness. Study it. Even if you do not understand it, do it. You will reap the benefit personally and collectively as citizens of the nation of Yudhe true holiness and righteousness. In my personal opinion, this is the greatest Feast of Tabernacles ever. I have really been enjoying bringing you supreme wisdom from Yudhe Wafe, my father. Also, again, encourage you to place your order now for the widow's son raised. That is a limited edition, and I'm sure you want your copy. And I'm sure you will probably want a copy for your friends. The series is the most important on earth. Poverty to Riches show. Promote it. Promote the widow's son raised. Make this the most popular show in America. The most popular show in America is going to become the most popular show on the planet Earth. Again, I enjoyed uh, bringing you the messages of salvation for true believers. Also, uh, I enjoyed bringing you the faith series, the power of faith. We shall overcome by faith. And I'm happy for each of you that have the book that the transcript of true believers are kept in the Father's name. And I especially enjoyed last night in bringing you the message, true believers are kept in safety. I'm hearing... Uh, a noise in the background of uh, people typing and talking, but I hope that the rest of you uh, don't hear that. Now it is clear. Thank you. My subject tonight is true believers are kept in joyfulness. Again, my subject tonight is true believers are kept in joyfulness and now I come now come I to you who are the lost sheep now I come to you who are the house of Israel now come I to you the dry bone now come I to you, the widow's son. And these things I speak before the nations in the world. This is your message first, but simultaneously this is a universal call. This is a universal message. This message ultimately will be on television worldwide because these things I speak before the nation in the world. Why? That you might have my joy fulfilled in yourself. The words of Yudhe Wafi Bethel Sophie Yudhe Wafi Yahweh bin Yahweh are imperishable, absolutely imperishable. Heaven and earth shall pass away, as you know it. But don't get confused because the earth is made to be inhabited forever. So that is the spiritual term that I speak, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. All of you bear witness 
that all my words are gracious. Every single word that I speak to you is absolutely gracious. Now that is something that we should take into account is the fact that my words are gracious. That means that my words are kind. My words to you are benevolent. My words to you are warm. My words to you are very friendly. My words to you are always cordial and affable, amiable, pleasant. My words are always courteous and polite. My words are mannerly. And you must admit that my words are always tasteful and easy and luxurious. My words are urbane and suave, refined and polished, cultured and cultivated. My words are merciful. My words are compassionate, full of compassion. My words are humane and my words are mild and gentle and clement, always. So it's a blessing to have someone to speak gracious words to you. My words are with power, no question, power, pure and you must be aware of that because if you're not aware of it then you miss the beauty of what I bring to you my words are designed to bring out the best of your abilities to enhance your capacity my words are designed to enhance your capability and potential. My words are with power, meaning designed to enhance. Yes, my words are with power. That means my words are designed to enhance your native ability to bring to your consciousness your natural talent, to cause you to realize your genius and exercise your genius. My words are with power designed to enhance your skill, your consciousness of your skill and the application of your skill. My words being with power are designed to cause you to realize that you are powerful and to be able to understand your mightiness, to understand that you are impregnable, that you are unassailable and invulnerable when you receive my words. You become invincible and you're conscious of it. My words are with power designed to invigorate you, to cause your intestinal fortitude to become great, to cause you to have sticking powder, power, excuse me, sticking power, <laughs> to Understand that my words with power are designed to give you 
absolute control cause you to become the rulers. My words are with power, and when you receive my words into your mind as your own character, then you become God. And as God, you become the masters. You dominate. You seek dominion of the planet Earth to fulfill Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Uh, you understand that my words are sovereign, and they will give you sovereignty when you receive them. I am here to give you sovereignty, to establish your sovereignty, because establishing the sovereignty of Yahweh in establishing my sovereignty, then it automatically establishes yours when you receive me, because then you become my co-heirs. I'm God, the mighty God. Therefore, you are to be God, omnipotent. Understand your omnipotence. My words are with power. So when you receive my words, then you exhibit unlimited power from within yourself. You exhibit unconditional authority. My words are with power. And uh, when you become conscious, then you understand your ability to influence whatever is going on. And you begin to ascend. You will even have political ascendancy, economic ascendancy, spiritual ascendancy, educational ascendancy, and social ascendancy without question. My words are with power because my words are supreme designed to establish your supremacy. My words are with power, and they predominate, and I'm here to cause you who receive me to predominate. My words are with power, therefore superior. When you receive them, you will display to the world your superiority. My words are with power. I am preeminent. When you receive my words, then you, be, you will demonstrate to the world your preeminence. My words are with power. Therefore, they are prominent. When you receive my words with the attendant power, then you will demonstrate your prominence to the world. My words with power are prestigious. And when you receive my words, you will absolutely demonstrate prestige. My words are with power. Therefore, I am the potentate potentate. When you receive my words, you become potentates. You become monarchs. When you receive my words, you become rulers. You become kings. You become chiefs. You become lords. You become masters. You become gods. I'm ready for you to receive my words. When you believe on me and you receive me, you receive my words, which are with power. And you will display this power before the world. The world is waiting on you. They are mourning at my coming because they're waiting on you to take your rightful place. And your rightful place can only be assumed when you receive my words that are with power. When you receive my words and the attendant power that accompanies them, then you as citizens of the nation of Yudhe Wavhe, true holiness and righteousness, you will become the superpower, the one and only superpower. When you receive my words, you become the world power. When you receive my words, you as citizens of the nation of Yudhe Wabe, true holiness and righteousness, become the world leader. Not just with an S, the world leader, the one and only, the supreme world leader. When you receive my words with power, and I'm here to give you the power to become the sons of God, Yahweh. Then you become, as citizens of the nation of Yudhe, Wapay, true holiness and righteousness, the most powerful nation in existence. 
And if you were relegated to a country, then you would be the dominant country that exists. Your strength could never be challenged. This is enough to let you see that why true believers are kept in joyfulness. By receiving my words with power, it can't help but bring joyfulness to be able to experience the things that I have just said to you. Thus, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. The words that I speak unto you, they are life. I have the words of eternal life. The words of Yudhe Wabi Bethlehem for the Yudhe Wabi Yahweh and Yahweh are incomparable. Absolutely incomparable. Never has a man spoken like me. You cannot go find a man that has spoken like me, that speaks like me. My words are incomparable. That's why the enemy tried to cut me off from you before you realize who you have with you. You have a man with you whose words are imperishable. A man whose words will not ever pass away. One whose words are gracious. One whose words are with power. One whose words are spirit and life and eternal life. I am the one whose words are incomparable. No wonder they tried to cut you off from me. To keep you from raising, being raised as the widow's son. You are the widow's son. And I am continuing to work with you until you are raised and become conscious of what it is I bring to you. To the true believer, my message is a source of keen pleasure. To the true believer, my message is a source of great delight. To the true believer, my message is a cause of keen pleasure. To the true believer, my message is a cause of great delight. Understand well that true believers will be kept pleased. You will always, forever, eternally, be kept pleased. True believers will forever be kept blissful. True believers will be kept exalted. believers, we're talking about true believers, will be kept in seventh heaven. Many have, that's a perfect one, seven is a perfect number. You will be kept in seventh heaven. True believers will be kept in raptured. You don't have to worry about a rapture coming and uh, with the, from the false teacher that you'll be caught up in the physical body. No, you're being caught up now. If you're a true believer, all true believers are being caught up this moment. You are enraptured. True believers will be kept cheerful. Not, uh, I wonder what cheerful is. Uh, uh, I'm saying to you over and over again, and whatever I say to you is to be studied. And you have such a habit of just reading. And then after you read it, 
you lay it down. Nothing is more important than these transcripts. Yes, I said get an auto reverse, uh, get an auto reverse machine that you can listen to the tape and go to sleep and uh, wash your brain with those beautiful teachings that I give you. Yes, you do that. But at the same time, study. To become God, you must study God. You must study the name, as I said to you earlier. So to be cheerful means that you'll be optimistic. True believers will always be kept optimistic. You will always have a positiveness about you. True believers will be kept in high spirit. True believers will be kept untroubled. True believers will be kept in a state of exhilaration. True believers will be kept good. And true believers will be kept rewarded. True believers will always be kept reassured. And when you encounter unusual circumstances and problems out of the ordinary and you face certain problematic traumas of this world without the knowledge of Yahweh and without the knowledge of my words with power, rest assured that true believers will be kept comforted. I am your comforter. True believers will be kept encouraged. True believers will be kept uplifted. True believers will be kept delightful and agreeable. Sit on the edge of your seat for a moment. Hold your seat. Because true believers will be kept full of pleasure. Isn't that exciting? Full? True believers will be kept full of rapture. To get the the, the, the full pleasure from these words with power, you must study each of these words that I'm saying to you. Using all of the tools of study that I have given to you. You must do so. To not do so is to miss the pleasure that is due you as God. You will miss the pleasure that is due you as kings and queens and princes and princesses. You will miss the pleasure that is due you as a citizen of the nation of U.K. Wild Things, true holiness and righteousness. True believers will be kept full of ecstasy. Can you imagine that? No, you cannot if you don't know what ecstasy is. If you have only one sentence in your definition for ecstasy, then you are missing it, aren't you? You know, we, we have an attitude so often from uh, being uh, ruined and spoiled in the public schools, we are just ruined, and uh, we have no idea of how to study words. We were never given that uh, that job, really. But ecstasy means uh, things like exhilaration, and thrills, and, uh, orgasm, excitement enthusiasm, and again, as I just used the word rapture, ecstasy includes bliss, as I've already stated to you, and euphoria. Uh, you probably only have the thought of joy and happiness and gladness and felicity, but uh, it's also, uh, ecstasy is delight and delectation, the seventh heaven that I'm talking about. You'll be able to swing on the stars and uh, have enjoyment beyond your dream and gratification that satisfies the soul. Uh, 
ecstasy includes uh, inspiration and radiance, uh, even paradise. That's heaven. Think about it. Think about it. 